The holidays are a joyous time for many, but they can be extraordinarily difficult if you lose a loved one during this time. The sentimental songs and constant mm -hmm. reminders to be cheerful can, well, they can make you feel alone and disconnected. In today's Relationship Reboot, how to deal with grief and loss during the holidays. Joining us now is our relationship guru, Dr. Kirsten Lynn Seal. Thanks for being with us, Kirsten. Yeah, thanks for having this me. Is, this is tough. People deal with it, whether that loss is fresh, be it loss of a loved one, loss of a job, whatever. Right. Or right. even if it's old, I think, right. you know, this is the time of year I know my mom really struggles with missing her parents. Sure, right, right. Yeah, anniversaries can be really hard. Mm. You know, and one of the things, I mean, so so one of the things that's important to remember is that there, there you can kind of divide loss into two basic categories. One is sort of the clear loss. When we actually lose somebody to death, there's no doubt about that. That's right? a loss, yeah. That's a loss. And then there's also this... Um, the type of loss that's called ambiguous loss, which is more complicated, and that can be, for instance, if a family member has Alzheimer's, so they're mm. physically here yeah. but psychologically gone, or if you have a family member who is deployed, for example, oh, sure. then they're psychologically here but physically gone, or for example, if you're trying to start a family and you have a miscarriage right before the holidays, then that's sure. it's kind of like how you know how many people do you tell. But that's a big loss as well, so it can be really, really tough during the holiday You season. have a couple of uh, things to remember as we yes. go into the holiday season, and the first one I think is really important. You say your grief is your own. Your grief is your own. So one of the things that really can happen with families, like for example, if you lost like a parent, right, sure. right before the holidays, and then the siblings ha will have different ways of grieving, right? Mm. So the, the, the problem comes, the conflict can come in relationships when one sibling thinks that their way of grieving is the way everybody else should grieve, mm. and then they get really angry. The other thing I think that happens is that basically when we lose someone, we often get angry and we don't know what mm. to do with that anger, mm, sure. so it kind of comes out sideways. And so when you really can accept and honor that other people's ways of grieving are different than your own, then that can really go a long way towards helping keep your other relationships intact while you, you're all grieving. You really have to think about the expectations you're going to have for your yes. own ability to kind of cope with right, all of this, right? Right, right, right. Like if you're the person who usually puts on the big, you know, the big holiday feast, uh, you may not be up for that, you know, so so this is a time to really accept help when people say, can mm. I do something? Your answer needs to be yes, you can, and here's what you can do. Please do the ham, please do the turkey. Sure. We talked about, you know, your grief is your own, people grieve in different ways, but also it's right. the timeline right. of that grief that, yes. you know, it, it can take months, years right. even. Right, I mean, I actually think that, you know, we never, this idea of getting over a loss, I don't think we ever get over sure. a loss. We just learn to go on, we learn how to manage it. You know, we, we rearrange our worlds yeah. and that person isn't there anymore. It's just a new normal. It's, it's not, you don't you get over what? it. That's exactly right. Yeah. It is a new normal. And I think that when people say, you know, oh, it's been six weeks, why aren't you over it? There's two things happening. One, they would really like you to be back to where you, how you were before. They miss you. They miss yeah. you, right? And then the other thing, too, is that they might be worried about their own grieving, like trying to, because uh. denial can be a very, very... Um, good coping mechanism, mm. but it doesn't work that well for that long. Some people would be tempted to just curl up and cancel the holiday. Yes, yes. You say don't do no, that. No, no, try to avoid doing that. So, you know, clearly it's going to be a different holiday, but it's really important to hold on to some ritual of some kind, even if it's a small one. Um, mm. For example, so I don't know if your mom had like, if there was a, a favorite cake or a dessert or something that her mom used to make, but that would be a way of honoring the memory of mm. her mom mm -hmm. during the holidays. Another thing that people do, um, especially at the loss was pretty recent before the holidays they set a place at the table for the person who's gone mm. because that piece about acknowledging our loss is so important is sure. that too hard for family members sometimes you know for some family members it might be and if that's so then then I say don't do it it's just an idea some people mm. might be able to and to say you know we're honoring you know or people say sure. here's to you know Aunt Sue and you need mm. to plan ahead you need to think about this before we get yes. up until next Thursday exactly exactly and yeah. you know you need to surround yourself with supportive people and people who mm. are gonna be who are gonna help yeah. you get through it yeah. if you've got like you know great Aunt Jane is always really judgmental and then you might want to give her holiday cocktail party of <laughs> miss <laughs> <Correct. laughs> right. good advice all year <laughs> yes. round for sure. right. thanks Kirsten right. we appreciate yes. it yeah.